All right, we've got joining us this afternoon, Senator Norm Sanders, and I thank you for taking the time to be with us. I know that he's between several meetings, and with that, Senator, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lockwood. How are you this afternoon? Doing well. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I know that uh, a busy week uh, is ahead of you. I was talking earlier with Pat McElrath. She informed me that uh, this week is crossover week. Uh, for the various pieces of legislation to pass muster within the appropriate chambers and then, of course, then to uh, transfer over to the um, opposite chamber. And, the, of course, the other topic we talked about was the issue of the budget. So with that said, uh, I'm curious, what is on tap for the Senate this week and particularly you? And will you be standing by to receive um, teachers as they go on strike? I mean, as they rally in Raleigh? And good afternoon. <laughs> well, let's let's answer the first one. Let's answer the second question first. Okay. Yes, I will be standing by. Uh, I'm always here. My office is always open to whoever wants to come. Uh, you know, I have a lot of personal feelings about this particular uh, occurrence, but you know, still we'll be here. I talked to my LA a little earlier, and I asked her if any of the groups, especially from my own counties. Uh, which I'm I'm really grateful to say none of them are at right. this point, as far as I know, are having to close. Right, uh, which is a great thing, and you know because we've 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 got so many kids that have missed so many days of school mm-hmm. already, and here we are at the end of the school year, and a lot of school districts are going to have to miss another day, and I know they're preparing for end of grade testing and all of that, and so uh, I think it's a little unfortunate, but. You know, again, they get to choose when they want to come up here and talk to us. And uh, I don't think I've had anybody to schedule an appointment. So I'm not sure if they're they're just going to take the uh, the chance just to, to come in and, and see if we're free uh, well, you know, or not. Well, you know, interestingly enough, I was talking to uh, Representative McHale Raft earlier, and uh, she commented that she will be in the Appropriations uh, Committee meetings because uh, she said Wednesday is a very important day for members of the House as they uh, protect. And uh, she she said, try to steal money from other other programs for her programs. And uh, she's very concerned because several of her programs are not uh, funded as well as they have been in the past. And of course, this is in relationship to uh, repairs and corrections as associated with the hurricanes. But she said that um, many uh, members of the House will not be available for a uh, visitation from teachers. And she was perturbed by that. But the other thing I, I asked her and I, I saw uh, a note late last week that there may be some legislation that's being presented that would restrict teachers from conducting uh, activities off the normal school calendar, such as a rally in Raleigh, uh, a strike in Raleigh, as uh, they're planning this coming Wednesday. I, have you heard anything of that nature? I haven't, Lockwood, uh, and, and, and of course that doesn't mean anything. We are in the midst of, of crossover, and every day when right. I pick up our calendars here, uh, we have the, the Senate is through with our uh, legislation we can't propose anymore. We've passed our deadline. Okay. Uh, the House is still, uh, I think they've got maybe the rest of this week. I'm not sure. Uh, but like today, I picked up the uh, calendar this morning, and there's uh, probably mm, 25, 30, 40 bills on their calendar that will be introduced, uh, read in uh, tonight. And so, uh, you know, there's very possible that something like that may be I mean, I think that we have to uh, proceed very carefully on that because, you know, I, I still think that this is something that should be worked out at a local level. Right. Uh, I, I don't think the state should have to intervene uh, in this. And if this becomes this becomes a, a, a yearly occurrence or even several times a year, there's nothing to stop these folks from doing this more than once in, in a legislative session. I think that uh, as far as I, I'm concerned, I think they're going to begin to do themselves more harm than they do good. And uh, and so, you know, I just – I look at the at their list of demands, the five major demands that they want to do. Uh, there's not many of those demands that have much to do with what's going on in the classroom, uh, in my opinion. And so, you know, I think that uh, their organization needs to be careful – you know, how they proceed with this also, uh, and that they don't, you know, uh, turn the sentiment that they have in their favor at this point. 
I, I know, that they don't I, turn it the other way. I, I have to question that on the issue of having it in their favor for several reasons. Number one, uh, to, to your point a moment ago, $15 an hour uh, minimum wage statewide. I don't know that that is an education issue. Uh, the case, for example, in expanding Medicaid, again, a question how that plays a role in education. We're, we're of the opinion that they're going to, to rally to promote educational needs. Now, uh, the topic of expanding and improving classroom facilities and uh, building more schools, that's part of this year's budget. Uh, I know that both the Senate and the House have a program associated with it, a little different issues. Uh, They are the five issues, and, uh, you know, I, I, they just seem to keep coming back around every year. Uh, no matter how we react to their uh, to their concerns, it just seems like it's never, uh, you know, never Fair adequate. Enough. And, look, I, I'm, I'm not saying that we didn't start from behind, uh, but, uh, you know, we, we are doing the very best we can uh, to play catch-up. Right. And with six or seven pay raises in six or seven years, uh, if you go and ask any other state employee if they've seen anything that faintly resembles that, I can guarantee you I know what their answer is going to be. And so we are one state, and all of these folks are employees of the state of North Carolina. And so, you know, they could argue very, very passionately that uh, maybe that they're not making uh, the salary that they should be making also. And so, you know, uh, I know that uh, there has to be there has to be an end game. And, uh, you know, just to throw out numbers or figures or mm-hmm. whatever, uh, I guess they don't understand that, you know, $15 an hour for maybe school personnel minimum salary, uh, that translates into $15 an hour for every person that works for the state of North Carolina. And so, uh, you know, you, you're not just talking about uh, a one time and done. This is something that, that takes a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of thought. Yeah. And 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 I, I we're we're not seeing a great deal of that. I won't belabor your time because I know you have another commitment here in just a few moments. Uh, Senator Norm Sanderson with us, of course, uh, third uh, senatorial district representing Pamlico, Craven, and Carteret counties. I got to make sure I get all those counties in there, <laughs> Senator. Um, let's talk here about. You said something that was interesting. I did not realize that the Senate had already established its or passed its deadline for bills to be introduced for potential crossover. Um, if there are bills that are introduced this week in the Senate, uh, is there a way to get them to a point where they can be uh, handed across to the uh, to the House? So what's what happens in those bills that are introduced this week? Well, you can you, you know you can have a, a if you've got a bill that's already filed for one purpose, okay. that bill can be changed for another to another purpose. Uh, but 
you know, the, the biggest thing, the, the bills that aren't subject to this is anything that has to do with elections, anything that has to do with money, with uh, okay. appropriations of any kind, or money that is being brought into the state. They're not subject to crossover. And so, uh, but, you know, you have to, we are uh, by by statue and by historical uh, purposes, we are a part-time General Assembly, and so, you know, we're already up to, uh, let's see, where is that? I was just looking at the number of uh, of bills that that we're up to. But the House has filed so far 1,013 bills wow. as of today. And uh, <laughs> and so, you know, we, the Senate, has probably filed six or 700. Wow. And, you know, maybe, maybe 5%, maybe. I'll give you the the benefit of the doubt and say even 10% mm-hmm. of those are actually going to get uh, hearings. And so, uh, you know, uh, anybody can file a piece of legislation. It doesn't matter what the subject is. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do. You give it to central staff and uh, our bill drafting staff and tell them what you want, and they'll draft you a bill, and you can take it to the clerk's office and file it, and it's on the record as being filed. But there's a whole lot more into this in this system to get bills through the General Assembly, and then you've got to get them through the governor's office, and then you've got to get them through the court system. And so, you know, that's, that's a lot different in just filing a piece of legislation and making and wa- actually watching, watching it become law. All right. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next week. I know that uh, a lot's on the plate. Uh, and, of course, you, once, once the House finishes its budget, it'll be coming across to the Senate, and uh, you begin the process. And I know that uh, there's work being done on the budget right now there in the Senate. So uh, with this, as we wrap it up with you, anything of significance this week that you'll be paying attention to that we should know about, Senator? Well, I've got I've got a couple of uh, bills I think that are very important to Eastern North Carolina. One is a is a rewrite of some of the uh, uh, Fisheries Management Act, mm-hmm. of trying to update it, uh, which is I've uh, been helped with the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries, and we put together a bill to update that. I think that's going to be very uh, crucial going forward, and uh, and we're also moving taking the next step in our. Uh, 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 aquaculture and, and seafood and, and the oyster industry. We're taking the next step into making that a reality to bring North Carolina in line and, and surpass any other state uh, that uh, 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 you know participates in, in, this, in, in this industry. And so I'm excited about those, and uh, right. uh, we'll be presenting those on Wednesday in agriculture, and they'll probably be on the floor next week. And so... All right. uh, there's two good bills. We will pay close attention to that. I know you're you're on to another meeting. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Look forward to conversations with you in the weeks ahead. Well, you're quite welcome, Lockwood. And as always, I really appreciate your your program, and I appreciate all the constituents that listen. Well, no, this is an important issue, and um, you know we get awfully wrapped up in things in Washington D.C. and around the world, but uh, it's right here at home that uh, yeah. our lives are impacted most and work by you, by Representative uh, Mikhail Raft, Senator Harry Brown, and others in our district, very important. Thank you very much and for I, being with us. And I encourage everybody to go and vote tomorrow. Absolutely. I'm going to give the detailed statistics here in just a moment. Stay with us here okay. on Viewpoints. And, Senator, thank you for your time. I appreciate that. You're welcome, sir. Thank you.